guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three, this is where the ball goes anymore. And just a simple tap pass, but it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, Someone either has to go with it or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well and it turned into a nice play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Eluding the pressure right. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Different pass rushes are designed for different things. Sometimes you want to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Sometimes you want him to flush. I don't know exactly how this one was designed, but they made sure they moved him to his right. He got out of the pocket. Unfortunately for him, he was hit as he tried to throw the... And that is caught. Touchdown, Kansas City. Two touchdown passes now here in this first quarter for Aaron Rodgers. And the Chiefs have taken the lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to it. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason? What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be trying to get it to Ebron, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28, and he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. And not the first quarter that he was hoping for. Now two interceptions thrown. Well, the good ones, they find a way to compartmentalize, right? Put these behind them, have that short memory, but understand why they threw the two interceptions. They go on and usually play a pretty decent game. Other quarterbacks, they have a hard time getting past it and often put the ball up for grabs the rest of the ball game. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside, and so many times defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when the next defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I try. All right, I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Rodgers now on third and goal. Yeah, he's got it. Touchdown. A.J. Brown with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Chiefs are able to extend their lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now 21-7. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And 
this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confident. And the Chiefs are going to get him. Aaron Donald make that now eight sacks for him on the season. But when you're down a couple of scores like this, CD, you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one. Yeah, when you take a good look at it broadly, sacks are better than giving up an interception. But where they are on the scoreboard, they've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for. One of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there, and it's Chiefs football. First and ten. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it could be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Meanwhile, Rodgers' throw caught by his receiver, Hill. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, and then the defense rallying quickly after that broken tackle. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. sure he made the right decision on that one I think if he had it to do over again he would have found a different target downfield but he made his decision and that one's incomplete and he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25 so he needed one he ended up getting three and I really like the way he ran that one too that's really intelligent running because oftentimes a running back could get too greedy try to hit the home run on a play where you just need a few yards well done there, making sure he got the first down and not worrying about trying to get a touchdown. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason builds up. But this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. The carry here for the big tight end. And he's going to take it into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. His third rushing touchdown of the year, his fifth overall. And the Chiefs add on to their lead. Tucker now to add the point after. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. 
And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So with the Steeler offense on their way out, let's take a look at the playoff picture of the AFC. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 27, Roethlisberger. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Roethlisberger. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Now, that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now, Balazs. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. 61 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. They'll go with Snell here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up. Found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Aaron Donald in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Here's Roethlisberger. Ebron with it over the middle. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. And Boswell's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And with a marker down, he's up just past the 25-yard line, but I think they're going to be going backwards. Let's check the call. And this is going to put them back with not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. On first down, Rodgers. Got a man, it's Brown. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Ran a perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. 
And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. Throwing is Rodgers. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Second down and goal. Rodgers escaping the pressure right. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. They are in an interception mood on defense. Had two nice interceptions a week ago. Now two here in the first half. Yeah, we call it ball hawking. And the only way to truly be good ball hawks is not guessing. It's not just simply anticipation. It's study and understanding what they like to do and beating them to the spot and creating big plays. Well, they're watching the film, and it's working. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. It's been a very one-sided game so far. they got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Second down and five. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man, that's the tight end, Fryermuth. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. The Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and three. He's got a man, it's his tight end, that's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A bit of a catch for him to remember. That's number 400 for his NFL career. Not a bad number at all. They'll run on first down. Snell. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that poster out there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. To throw here, Roethlisberger. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And in for the Steelers' touchdown. Eric Ebron. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Steelers go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. 
You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he can't field it cleanly. It's loose. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Aaron Rodgers will focus on him. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Second and ten. A very chilly day here, but no snow. And you know, I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. Well, able to force him out of the pocket right, but still able to complete it. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. When we see another great performance like this out of Aaron Rodgers, you have to chuckle thinking that his only FBS offer was a walk-on at Illinois. And now he's the pride of Butte Junior College, of course at Cal. And I remember watching him play at Cal, and he would run seven-on-seven -seven drills. Angry if the ball ever hit the ground, and it didn't do it very often. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here's second and ten. Flushed out right. Back to Brown, this time complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. The Chiefs will use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Rodgers going to try and throw on third down. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described. And he was able to do just that. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. On second and goal, Rodgers. And that is caught for the touchdown, Kansas City. Four touchdown passes now for Aaron Rodgers. And the Chiefs are able to grow their lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards, and it winds up with the Chiefs hitting Painter. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. So now Eric Ebron and the rest of the offensive unit trotting on the field. Well, he's within shouting distance of a thousand yard season. Gonna need a pretty good finish though if he wants to reach that mark. Well, I like how you phrased it, partner. He is within shouting distance. If he stays on this pace, he's got a shot at it. But he needs a big game in there, right? To make sure that he gets it. So you know that during the week in practice, and, and look, he asked for the ball all the time anyway. He's really gonna ask for the ball and let his quarterback know he's open. Second and ten. Roethlisberger will throw. This one into the hands of the running back, Belage. 
And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Final play of the half. It's Roethlisberger. Short little throw to Ebron. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. And just like that, on we head to half number two. Ready for the start of the third quarter. The Chiefs have the lead and set to receive the football. Taking it at about the one. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They run. This is Lewis. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. Mika Fitzpatrick, the all-pro safety, up to make the play. On second down, Peterson. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Heavy set out there on third and one. They hand off to their big tight end. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he's out of bounds, almost gets to the 10. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Flush to his right. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. Aaron Rodgers on fire, his fifth touchdown pass of the ball game. And the Chiefs take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Tucker now for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So the drive there took six plays, and it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. Oh, and second down, it's Snell. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. On third down, Roethlisberger. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, 
Do you assign a man to him and try and cover it before he gets going? Vin's throw there, hauled in by Claypool. And he goes out right around the 39. Three yards the gain there, second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Now Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This will be fielded at the 17. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. And nobody in the stadium feels better than he does right now. Just a slew of touchdown passes. He's been spectacular. And you and I both know this is a team game, one of the best team games that's out there. But right now, I've forgotten what the scoreboard even says. Just watching what he's doing. Been fun. That's, that's, that's been mesmerizing and a whole lot of fun to watch. He's hoping to keep it going here in the third quarter. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. From midfield, here's Rodgers. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And the Chiefs are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Well, he does have one touchdown in the game already, and while this one won't go for six, it's enough to get him first and goal, but you and I both know he's going to be a little upset he didn't cross the goal line for a second time in this one. Might want the ball, and he will take it on in for a Chiefs touchdown. Trey Burton, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game, and the Chiefs just continue to pour it on. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Steelers getting set and ready for their next possession. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Roethlisberger. Short little throw to Ebron. 
And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense did not look particularly good all game long, but a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Now Roethlisberger to throw, and he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Trying to run for it with Snell, and he is going to get the first down as he covers up after a pretty good shot there. And, Charles, you look at this offense, their struggles moving the ball well documented. Dead last in the NFL in first downs, but signs of life there. Yeah, and you and I do, I think, a really good job of respecting the game and respecting the teams. But this squad, they're in a position now where their fan base gets excited when they pick up a first down. They cheer almost like they picked up a touchdown. From the 38, Roethlisberger throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Now Green, well, staying on the ground. Let's hope he's all right. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. On second and nine, Roethlisberger. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, over the middle. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 15-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And all the way down inside the five to the four. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Open man is Johnson. Touchdown, Steelers. Deontay Johnson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. Boswell good with the extra point, and that will cut this lead down to 25. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. KC's offense ready to take over. Still comfortably on top third quarter as they start things here with a first and ten. Rodgers. He gets it into the hands of Larry Fitzgerald. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Now that's one they hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. Throwing now is Rodgers. Looking deep now for Amendola. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran with a pick. 
Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And he's taken down, a Chiefs sack. Aaron Donald in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting the sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. One quarter remains here in week 16. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and seven. Now Roethlisberger, short little throw to Ebron. And he will be marked down short of the first as they get to him at the 29. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Steelers try it, but they come up empty on fourth down. And the Chiefs will have the football back in excellent field position. Now the Chiefs offense, they get ready to head on the field. Been a very strong performance for them, really on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs is the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging them, giving them a little dab. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the way out. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game, moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, hey, why don't you take your quarterback out when the game's in hand? They just kind of give us that look like that's what he's paid to do. So it's a very unusual situation. I'd want him out. They tend to lead. And Brown's got it for a Chiefs touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Chiefs are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Short little throw to Ebron. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now it's Roethlisberger. And the Chiefs are going to get him. The man they call Snacks, Damon Harrison, able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another 
third try after the first down sack. Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Defensively, they've had their way in this one. That pick six makes that scoreboard even more lopsided. I remember talking with a guy in the league, and I said, what do you do when the game's like this? You know, it's pretty much over. You ready to go to the bench and hang out? He said, oh, heck no. I want to stay on the field. I might get some stats. I might get a pick or two. <laughs> you like being out there at the end of these wide margins. When they have to throw it, that gives you more opportunities to go get it. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Back to the air, Roethlisberger after the pick six. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team... They've really been put through the ringer in this one. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. Open man here is Gentry. And he will have a Steelers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. to throw again. Hitting Juju on the slant. And now the ball's out. Fumbled near midfield. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. Now Rodgers on the bootleg. It's complete to Brown, right side. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. Partner, I have to tell you, just one word keeps coming to mind from watching them this afternoon, and that's impressive. They have been impressive from the opening kickoff and they haven't let up here even into the fourth quarter. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Now this home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Cameron Hayward in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Now Rodgers. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The Chiefs on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This will be third and 19. This will be caught by Brown. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
tell you what, Barter, the way he's been slinging it in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. And that's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Trey Burton with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Chiefs are closing in on win number 10 as they extend this fourth quarter lead. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. It's now appearing that this losing streak is going to continue. You know, the coaching staff was confident that this was going to be the game to stem the tide, but that just has not been the case. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. That's complete to his tight end, Fryermuth. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Roethlisberger. And he's taken down, a cheap sack. Aaron Donald has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. And you could say that is just another cherry on top for this defense and that entire team. But really, this defense has sparked what's been an impressive effort here in this one. And notice you used the word sparked because you're not seeing that on the other side of the ball, are you? The offense right now, the spark has left their game, and it's been because of what you... And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at the 36. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Now it appears we've got a Chief moving pretty gingerly down there. Not something you want to see in Week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. So after the INT, it's Rodgers eluding the pressure right. And that is incomplete. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. To throw on second and 10. Rodgers escaping the pressure right. Brown has the first down and much more. And finally taken down at the 15. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team is picked. And that is caught. Touchdown. Oh, there is a marker on the field. The celebration may be short-lived. Let's see. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. Got to go back to the... And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. Cameron Hayward racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. 
Yeah, he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. But they're going to wrap him up as he'll go down well short of a first. Andy Reid went for it, but it won't pan out. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Roethlisberger's throw complete to Fryer Muth. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Here's Roethlisberger. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now. Standing just outside his own goal line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And we have reached the two-minute warning. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. Two touchdowns to his credit so far. Charles, I'm curious, do these wide receivers, what do they go in with each week? Is it different week to week for the goals that they personally set for themselves, do you think? I doubt that it's different from week to week. Maybe because of game plan, they know that one guy might be featured more than the other. But all in all, these guys are looking for 100 or more yards in, in receiving. But the biggest thing, getting into the end zone. And how about him? He's gotten there twice in this game. He has indeed. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Rush coming, and he's taken down. T.J. Watt make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Brown. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Rodgers throwing here. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. They're still throwing the football here. Now, obviously, the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. Feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and try and stop any type of a running play. Short little path. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Well, partner, when a team's up this big, this late in the game, I always wonder, what's their motivation? Because if it's me, I'm thinking about pulling on the reins a little bit. But for them, I don't think it's in their DNA. It's not in their head coach's makeup at all. I think his opinion is, 
You stop us. We're not supposed to pull back ourselves. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. This is just an exercise in futility. Do you even bother running a play here offensively? I would because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So after it's over, you're going to go to the film, find out where the game was 